It feels like every year we get at least one team in the league that completely defies expectations. Teams that overachieve and surprise a lot of people, whether it's a bad team that became good or a good team that became great. In 2023, quite a few ball clubs fit this criteria. The Diamondbacks, Rays, Rangers, Marlins, and Orioles are all playing significantly better than most people expected them to by this point in the season. But in the last month, there's been another team to join that group, the Cincinnati Reds. In the last 10 seasons prior to this one, the Reds were one of the most poorly run franchises in the entire league, with zero indication of improvement anytime soon. But today, they are the hottest team in Major League Baseball. They have loads of young talent giving them an extremely bright future, and for the first time in a long time, People in Cincinnati have no shame in saying they're a Reds fan. The last time they finished a season top two in their division was over a decade ago in 2012, where they won the NL Central at 97 and 65. Just to put into perspective how long ago this was, 2012 was the final year we saw six teams in the NL Central division instead of five, with the Houston Astros finishing in last place before they moved to the AL West, while these were the notable award winners from that season, again exemplifying just how much the league has changed. Following their playoff elimination, the team really struggled to find any success over the next decade. Despite the division shrinking from six teams to five, theoretically giving them a better chance at success, every year since 2012 saw the franchise be mediocre at best. They did not win a single playoff game in this span. In fact, in this 10-year span from 2013 to 2022, the Reds have the second worst record amongst all 30 MLB teams. So you get the point, they sucked for a long time. Heading into 2023, people expected more of the same, a ball club that isn't really a threat to anyone with no chance of playing winning baseball over the course of a full season. In all fairness, these predictions did kind of make sense at the time. They have the second youngest team in the league with a lack of big name players, which means one thing. If the team wanted to find success, it was up to the young guys to make a name for themselves. And that is exactly what the 2023 Cincinnati Reds have done. This is a list of the top eight leaders in war for the team so far. We're going to break down how the franchise got each of these guys and how they've impacted the 2023 season, starting with the two pitchers. Following the Reds' 2016 season at 68 and 94, they held the second overall pick in the 2017 draft, where they took 17-year-old starting pitcher Hunter Green out of high school. After years of grinding in the minor leagues, he was ranked at number 71 on the top 100 prospects list for 2021, and the number one prospect for the Reds organization. Green made his MLB debut last year at 22 years old. While his stats that season might not have been amazing, he definitely showed flashes of becoming a dominant pitcher in the future. In a game versus the Dodgers that season, he broke the MLB record for most pitches above 100 miles per hour with 39. In 2023, this young flamethrower has certainly shown signs of improvement, but definitely has much more room to grow. He's still basically a baby in this league at 23, so he has plenty of time to fully develop, and if all goes well, he can be an all-star caliber ace for the Reds in the future. Next is Alexis Diaz. Unlike Hunter Green, Diaz didn't have much hype around him during the draft, but in 2015, the Reds decided to take a chance on the 18-year-old in round 12, meaning 354 players got selected before him. Prior to 2022, if someone asked you who Alexis Diaz was, most would say younger brother of two-time reliever of the year Edwin Diaz. If someone asked you again right now, the more popular response would be one of the best relievers in baseball. After a nice rookie campaign last year, Diaz has been even more dominant in year two. As of right now, he's the only player in the league to record 20 or more saves and have zero blown saves. He's been lights out coming out of the bullpen for Cincy this entire season. When he got drafted as a teenager in 2015, I don't think anyone in the Reds organization expected his ceiling to be this high. He was an absolute steal for this franchise and has played a massive role in their success so far. While right now Cincinnati's pitching overall is the weakest part of their team, they certainly make up for it with their group of young bats in the lineup starting with the rookies. As far as Ellie De La Cruz goes, I could make an entire video just about him and his rise to MLB stardom, but thankfully, I already did in a video I uploaded last week. So if you're interested in hearing about his unlikely journey to the big leagues, make sure to check that one out. In just three weeks of MLB games, Ellie might already be the face of the Reds franchise. Long story short, in 2018, the Reds signed him after scouting one of his workouts in the Dominican Republic for a contract worth $65,000 when he was just 16 years old. After putting tons of work into his development during COVID, he came to Reds camp in 2021 looking like a monster. After making a complete mockery of the minor leagues for the last two years, he became the number one prospect in the Reds organization and a top three prospect in baseball. They called him up to make his debut in early June, and since then he's been going off. He's quite literally the fastest player in the entire league, 
he can hit the ball harder than almost anyone, and his first career home run was a row or two away from leaving the entire stadium. A few days ago, he became the youngest player to hit for the cycle since 1972. In these last few weeks, he's shown clear signs of being a star player for many years to come. I know this was a brief explanation, but again, I recommend watching the full story about him so you can fully understand just how incredible he is. The next two rookies might not be as hyped up as Ellie, but their contribution to this team shouldn't go unnoticed. In a trade last August, the Twins traded the Reds three prospects in exchange for starting pitcher Tyler Malley, with one of those prospects being Spencer Steer. While Malley has put up good numbers so far in Minnesota, I don't think Cincinnati is regretting this trade one bit. Steer is on pace for a rookie season with 20 plus home runs and 80 plus RBIs, as he's still just 25 years old. As of right now, he may not be projected to finish top 5 in NL Rookie of the Year voting, but that doesn't mean he can't take his game to the next level and be another homegrown star for this team in the future. Same thing could be said for the final rookie we'll cover, which is Matt McClain, who was drafted by Cincinnati's 17th overall in the 2021 draft out of UCLA. Over the course of his career in college, the minors, and so far this season, he was never really a home run hitter, but the man simply just gets on base. So far this season, he's hitting comfortably over 300 at the age of 23. He's the type of hitter that every successful team needs, where he's not the biggest threat to kill you with the long ball, but you can still trust him to keep the line moving and give you some quality at bats. Once again, continuing the trend of the Reds having young players that aren't phased at all by MLB pitching. This young core of rookies that they put together alone would be considered a successful rebuild for most franchises. It still doesn't take into consideration the final three players we'll cover. In the first round of the 2018 draft, they took infielder Jonathan India with the fifth overall pick out of Florida. After spending three years working through the minors, he earned a spot on the team's 2021 opening day roster. The 24-year-old had a very good rookie campaign, which made him the first Reds player to win Rookie of the Year since 1999. After a down year where he battled with injuries in 2022, he seems to have bounced back in 2023, as he's on pace for a 20 home run, 80 RBI season as well. There have been tons of rumors about him potentially being traded to another team at some point, but that still doesn't take away from the fact that he's been a solid bat in this lineup for the team that drafted him five years ago. Next is the Reds' leader in war this season, TJ Friedel, another guy with a wild backstory that the Reds got for pretty much nothing. Friedel was undrafted following the draft in 2016 and was free to sign with any club as an undrafted free agent. The Reds couldn't believe he slipped through the cracks and offered him a contract with a signing bonus of just over 732 grand, the largest signing bonus ever for an undrafted free agent. Of course, he accepted this deal and it has certainly paid off for both parties. After not playing much in his first two seasons, this year the 26-year-old has earned his spot. It's basically like having another Matt McLean in the lineup as the two have very similar stats. While TJ Friedel is definitely not the most well-known player on this team, he's very quietly putting together a season where he's the most valuable in terms of war. It's really hard to believe that out of the 1,216 players taken in the 40-round 2016 draft, TJ Friedel was not one of them, once again making the Reds look like absolute geniuses. And finally, the last player we have to cover is Jake Fraley. In March 2022, Cincinnati traded Eugenio Suarez and Jesse Winker to the Seattle Mariners for four prospects, which included Fraley a trade that might go down as another W for Cincinnati, especially since 2023 seems to be his breakout year. In 61 games, he already has a career high with 47 RBIs, 12 stolen bases, and a 272 batting average, while he's on pace for a career high in home runs and walks as well. At 28 years old, he's the oldest player covered in this video, which is still younger than the average age of an MLB player this season. Just to recap, here are the eight players a part of this next generation of Reds baseball and how they were acquired. Not a single one of these guys was signed through regular free agency. Whether it was through trade, an international signing, undrafted signing, or the draft, this group of guys highlighted the absolute masterclass display from the Red Scouting and Development Department since 2015. So many of these key players on the 2023 roster flew under the radar in the past, making their acquisitions low risk, high reward. Of course, I've got to show some love to Reds legend Joey Votto as well. He recently made his season debut after suffering an injury last year, but when healthy, the former MVP has proven to be one of the best first basemen in Major League Baseball. He's been a Red his entire career, he's been with them through all the suffering this past decade, 
and finally, at the age of 39, he's being rewarded with this miracle season led by the young guys. The Reds currently sit at 41 and 37, first place in the NL Central. They recently had a 12 game winning streak come to an end, one game shy of tying the longest streak in MLB this season. Regardless, this streak electrified the city of Cincinnati, finally giving fans a glimpse of winning baseball. They're doing all of this with one of the worst team ERAs in the entire league, so they can very well become World Series contenders by simply making two or three moves that improve the pitching. Unless you're a fan of a team that rivals the Reds, it's incredibly hard to root against them this year. They've proved that they are a team to be feared in the future, as this is just the beginning of a new era of baseball for this franchise. While the 2023 Cincinnati Reds are far from a lock to make the postseason at this point in time, Time, the incredible run they went on in June, plus this underdog aura that surrounds the organization, has been enough to convince millions of fans that for this season, they are truly America's team. How far do you think the Reds go this season? Let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm going to be making MLB content like this all season long. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.